Hello, welcome to Minimalist EDC. My name is Chris, and today we're going to do a little disassembly and maintenance on this guy right here, the Pena X Series Bravo. I wasn't originally going to do a disassembly video on this guy since there was only one drop of these from Knife Joy, and I didn't know how many were out in the wild. I hope you would be interested in this, but as of today, uh, Mr. Pena actually dropped uh, another uh, batch of these on his website. So you can go to penaknives.com as of recording this, and if they're still there, grab you one. But I had a little bit of trouble getting into this guy to begin with, so I thought I'd do a little disassembly video to talk about it and show you guys the best way to go about it. So, uh, it's pretty simple. We're going to need a knife, we're going to need a driver, T8, T6. So, let's just jump into it. Um, the reason I have this guy out here, this is the original clip that comes with it. Uh, if you watch my unboxing video where I talk about why I don't particularly care for this clip, so that is why there is an aftermarket clip on it at the moment. But, the procedure is the same. We're just going to take that clip off with our T8 driver and get into the knife. And I usually just set the whole assembly by itself, screws intact, that way I don't have to chase them later. And so here's where I came into an issue. And I'm going to talk about this more on my full review of this guy, but the, the pivot on here is not captured, meaning it free spins. So when you try to uh, use a driver to turn this, the whole pivot assembly turns, and on the back side, there's no uh, opposing uh, Torx bit insert on the show side scale for you to uh, put reverse torque on so you can free it. And so I actually spent a lot of time getting this guy off. Um, what I found to work best, and this is at your own risk, but <laughs> take the if you open the blade up and put a little bit of pressure. Uh, on the show side, pushing toward the clip side, that actually puts uh, it turns the blade at such an angle where it puts a little bit of pressure on the pivot uh, pivot itself. So when you actually go in there and turn it, the pivot stays in its place unless you actually get that screw out. So you really have to do that once or twice to get to get it to work. So the uh, we have our our pivot screw out. The scale is going to come right off, and there's a pivot collar right here. I'm trying not to pop that out because I don't want to chase it. So the pivot collar, um, it does come out, but I'm going to leave it recessed sitting in there. And that exposes our liner. And so the liners are made out of some sort of anodized titanium um, material. They uh, really high quality, really, really lightweight. I kind of wish there had been some milling done throughout to lighten it up a little bit, but that's more of a wish list item. Um, one of the interesting things you, you'll see in here, with, with a lot of liner locks, you don't see this uh, insert. Uh, so this this is all titanium, but this little bit right here is actually steel. So the interface between the blade and the lock bar is steel on steel, which reduces uh, the propensity for lock stick and um, increases the longevity of the blade. So if we, if we ever had to replace that for any reason, we would take these screws out, but we don't have to do that today. And I'm, that's another nice thing as well is like the titanium hardware that's on this guy is all anodized um, the same color so you have the the scale being green micarta the clip that comes with it being this green anno as well as all the hardware and even the ones you can't even see these screws from the outside and they're, he's, they're still anode them it's a nice touch so uh, the next thing we're going to do to get into this guy is we have these guys right here which are T6 and they're pretty easy to remove. And these are steel screws. As you can see, they are sticking to my bit driver, which is magnetic. Makes it a little bit easier to get them out. Come on, there we go. All right, so I'll put them together over there because we're gonna need those back. And so getting this apart shouldn't be too bad. Just watch the blade itself. And I kind of just wiggle it a little bit until I get it to pop off that pivot. Now you can take this full thing apart if you choose to, um, and you might need to if you're ever going to clean it. But what I'm honestly what I do for the most part is there is a uh, pin right here that this thing is situated on. I'll just rotate that out of the way. You don't like it's just another part to get lost or um, you know get in your workstation. So uh, I, I just pivot out of the way to get it what I want to work at. So. I want to get here at the blade. So I got I got my blade with a K 
caged bearing. So I'm going to set that there. Yep. And then I have the other bearing here. Get that out. And then we have the bearing racer right here, which I'm going to get out and clean as well. Um, where's my little tool? I think this will do. I should be able to get that to pop right out. Yeah. Well, it'll just let gravity do its thing. As you can see, that the, the pin that uh, fell out with it is the another pin that sits into the scale, and it's not secured in any way, shape, or form, so just be aware of that and don't lose it. And so the other bearing racer is going to be in the other scale, which I'm just going to hopefully be able to tap it out. Maybe I have to... There it is. All right, perfect. So now we have all the things that we need to clean and lube. And as always, I'm just using a paper towel, nothing terribly fancy. You can use microfiber or, or uh, gun cleaning cloths, but paper towel works just fine. And bargain basement rubbing alcohol. And so I'm going to start with the, the, the uh, bearing racers. And there's not much gunk on this. This is this knife hasn't seen a whole lot of hard use yet, so, but I am going to just degunkify them. All right, and the same with the bearings. We're just going to get alcohol lubed on each of them. And I did rub a little hard. I don't know if you saw that, but it, it caught a little bit of my paper towel material in there, and I got that out. So usually when I when I get to that spot, I'll just I've, I've started to fray the material, and this is what the reason why you might want to work with a nicer material than just a paper towel. It won't, it won't fray nearly as easily, but if I'm not being heavy-handed, I can just take the bearing and roll it on the, its little balls on, on the uh, alcohol swab and do a pretty good job of just cleaning it off. And then the blade. So, let's see here, we have the bearing track, which is nice and defined. Um, we have pretty decent little choil here. Um, the one thing you'll see on this blade, and I'll try to show it to you, is I, I did sharpen this thing, and it I I wasn't paying as close attention as, as I should have been, and I did nick the choil a little bit. It doesn't hurt anything. It just uh, doesn't look as nice when uh, when you're looking at it up close. But the reason why I sharpened it, I actually reprofiled it. This, these things come with a really thick uh, bevel. Like I think it was. I, I found it was like 30 degrees. I lowered it down, reprofiled that, excuse me, reprofiled it down to 20 degrees, and it's a much, much nicer slicer. Um, I have a thought in my head that maybe I might send the, the blade off to get modded and put a hollow grind on here because I think this would be amazing with a hollow grind, but that's future plans. So, all I'm going to really do is get our blade nice and clean. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Perfect. All right. So now we're we're on to reassembly. So I'll take this splayed out like it like we had it. And the first thing I'm going to do is replace a bearing racer. And I will, if you take a look, you'll see which side that the bearings were actually run on. There's one that'll be more worn than the other. And so I'm going to place it back in the original position that it came in. No reason to reinvent the wheel on that one. And just a little bit of oil. I'm using uh, KPL. And then we are going to take a bearing. And I'm just going to put a little bit in there so it kind of lubricates in, in between. It gets in that groove. So some cage bearings have this system where the, the bearings are half exposed and I usually will face that towards the blade. That way I can actually capture some of the lube in the runners of it. Next, we have our blade. Perfect. And all I'm gonna do here is add a little bit of lube to this track and a little bit to the detent ball track. Next. I want to place a dab or two in the channel here. Not a whole lot. I just kind of want it to coat the bearings that are in there. I'm going to place that 
channel side down toward the blade. And the last little bit will be on this scale. We need to get this guy back in. And so this actually might make it slightly more difficult. So I'm going to see if I can wiggle this guy out. No, I'm just gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. So with holding everything, all, the whole assembly together, all I'm doing is gonna place a little bit of oil in there, take the bearing, place it back. Hydrostatic pressure will hold it in place. It's not gonna go anywhere. I put a little bit on there. Like I said, I can turn it back over and I don't expect it to fall out as I rotate it. And so just to make sure everything looks good, I'm going to lift it over the thumb studs and lift the lock bar over the thumb stud. Slowly, and there we go. And then take a look at where my work is. All right. Should be a pop. Yeah, that's a lovely sound. All right, so it's back in its original position. So we are going to get back to work with our T6 bits. Oh, there we are. Got one in. We will get the other in. All right, now that we got the T6s in, I'm going to get the scale back on with the pocket clip. And just uh, just a, a side note about what what you saw me do there, and I want to make sure that I'm clear about as far as not damaging your knife. When you put this, um, when if you do it the way I did it, and you're perfectly welcome to take this scale completely off, or the liner completely off. Um, there's no over travel stop on this because as a non you know um, not being a frame lock, it doesn't need one. You got to be. You do have to be careful when you're lifting it over the thumb studs that you're not over um, overextending this lock bar because you don't want to mess with the detent on the knife. If assuming the detent is the way you like it, but just a little note on that. All right, so now we're going to get the pivot screw back in, and I am going to put a slight bit of blue Loctite on there. Again, it is kind of a pain to get this thing open when the, the pivot is locked, but you also don't want the pivot screw coming out on you. All right. And then lastly, we will get our pocket clip back on. Once the pocket clip on is on, we will check to see if the detent and the action look good. And then we will call it a day. All right. Those are nice and tight. All right. Get the cleanup of the workstation and see what we got. Feels good. Let's see. We don't have any vertical play or horizontal play. That feels good. Did I get it on the first? Oh, man. Yeah, this was not drop shutty before I uh, did a little bit of maintenance on it, but ooh, that is nice. Perfect. All right, cool. Well, that has been disassembly and maintenance on this guy. I don't know if uh, by the time I publish this, if Pena is going to still have them up for sale. Highly recommend this guy. Love it a bunch. It's getting a lot of pocket time. I should uh, have a final thoughts and full review up in a week or so, maybe, depending on how work schedule goes. But uh, yeah, this is this is a nice one. All right, thank you guys. P appreciate a like and subscribe. Y'all have a great day.